Hello again, welcome back to my Android coding tutorial series. This is tutorial number 9. In this tutorial we will cover how to include a pre-populated database in your application. As you can see here, our application is currently not running. And you can see over here in the background, our file browser for our emulator shows no database on the emulator. Now let's go ahead and start up our application. And suddenly, in the file browser you can see in the background here, there's the database. And you can see here in our tutorial, really nothing else happened, just loads up a black screen. Now let's go examine the application. It's only got two files, it's got two classes, our main tutorial9.java, it's got our tutorial9 class, it's got an ingredient helper class, and then it's got the database that we want to include in the assets folder. We examine the activity, tutorial9, you can see inside the onCreate, it's got our standard super onCreate, set content view, very standard. Then it's got two calls. One initializes our ingredient helper object, and then two runs the create database on that ingredient helper uh, object. We need to call that create database function every time our application loads, just to check to make sure that one, uh, if we've never ran this before on this phone, that we copy the database over to the proper location. Uh, or if we have, then we don't do that because we don't want to overwrite our database. Uh, unless we're upgrading, and we'll cover upgrading in another uh, episode. You can see there's only one uh, variable to this activity. It's just the object that we're discussing. Now let's examine the class itself. Our ingredient helper class is an extension of SQLite Open Helper. Uh, it's got a couple of static variables. It's got uh, database path, database name, you can see those are just strings. We've got a schema version, in this case one, we use that as part of our upgrade uh, methods if we were upgrading just to keep track. And you can see here is our uh, create creator. It runs a uh, super and then it just copies over the context that we pass it. Um, we've got our on standard on create, if we pass it in SQL, their uh, database as a argument, doesn't do anything, same for upgrade. Now the create database call runs create db. Inside the create db, we run a function db exists. We want to see if the db exists. We get our variable back, either true or false. We run our if. If it exists, then we don't do anything. If it doesn't, then we run get readable database. This is a built-in method for objects of type uh, SQLite open helper. And this is important because what this function does is if the database file is not currently where it needs to be in the default location for this application, it will create an empty file in the correct location. This is important because later on we're going to take that empty file and we're going to copy over our file onto it so we can use our included ingredients.db file in our application. So that gets ran. Now we execute copy db from resource. And copy db from resource has an input stream and an output stream. And then it's got a string for the db file path, which is the two uh, statics that we had up at the top. We initialize our uh, stream. We have our input stream, our output stream, and a buffer. We read the input, write it to the output, we flush and close, and that's pretty much it. That is what copies our DB from resource over. Um, that takes this, overwrites that empty file that we created, and now we've got our ingredients.db file uh, in the proper location for us to use. And this here is the db exists function. This was what we ran to see if the file was already there. We don't want to run uh, the copy db from resource and overwrite that file if we've already done this once before. So just a simple little uh, couple of function calls to see if the database is already where we need it to be. And if so, then we don't do anything. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I will go over this in more detail uh, in the next couple episodes. Uh, to include uh, some functions to illustrate that yes, the database is uploaded, it's populated, and also to do some error handling on this, just so in case if your coding is breaking on something, you can see what exactly it's breaking on.